today I'm going to talk about what I call the 10x hypothesis. And it's about, it's often easier to improve by 10x than to improve by 10%. So my name is Arjen van der Ven. Like Jim said, I lead a team at Intel whose charter is to push boundaries. My job is to find the next 10x. My job is to, and my team's job is to find how can we push computing 10x forward. Um, it really is easier to do 10x than a 10%. And today I'm going to talk you through some examples of that, and I'm hoping at the end of it you'll actually agree with me. Um, in my team, we build a Linux distribution. Yes, Intel makes a Linux distribution. Um, all our customers have their own Linux distribution today. And for us to be able to effectively work with our customers, we need to have, know what's hard for them. We need to know what they're struggling through. Um, and we need to show them what, what is possible with Linux on Intel architecture. Um, so this is sort of a backdrop of what my team does, and this is where we build a lot of our innovations and 10x is on top of. Um, and sort of the 10x ID started about in 2008, when at the Plumas conference, we, I stood up with Auke and we said, hey, we've shown that you can boot a Linux operating system to a full UI in five seconds. And we actually had a machine there, and we demoed it, and we had to demo it 10 times because it went too quick. Um, at the time, Linux OS booted in about two minutes, and then you had your, then you had your UI up. We showed five seconds, and that's a little bit more than 10x in that case. Um, people didn't believe it, so we had to show it 10 times, and we, had to, we talked all day about how we did that, how we changed the rules, um, and the key of how we did that was it is not about making things faster. It's about making things fast. The mindset we had in that project was, we need to not go from two minutes to one minute 30. We need to go to five, five seconds. Um, well, I'm talking 10x. So today, if you look at our at clear Linux, we boot in about 400 milliseconds. We did another 10x on top of our 10x. Um, but it's a way of, you need to think outside of the box to actually get to these kind of questions. It's about make boot fast, not faster. Likewise, and this was we talked about in 2012, at Plumers again. Um, CI CD is hot. Everybody talks about CI CD. Everybody wants to deploy 100 times a second. Deploying 100 times a second is fine, as long as your deployment itself is efficient. In the operating system space where we want to deploy at least twice a day, if not five times a day, if your update mechanism is slow, no customer will update. You can't actually do CI CD properly if you can't actually update fast. And in the age of Docker, people sort of ignore it a little bit. But even Docker updates, you want to be, your, your deployment needs to be efficient. So we talked about in 2012 about, OK, we're going to do a half a second OS update. Not three minutes, half a second. And if you use Yum or Apt or sometimes those take a while, we showed that you can do half a second if you change the rules a little bit. If you, change, if you go to an atomic update model, if you go to slightly coarser granularity of packages, um, today, Ubuntu, Snappy, Red Hat Atomic, they're all doing these same paradigms. But again, it's a 10x change to the existing paradigm to make deployment fast. Another 10x. Um, unfortunately, not all our lives are 10x. If everything was a 10x, it was easy. Sometimes you need a lot of 10% to get a little bit of improvement. And I'm not going to say we don't ever work on 10x, 10%, because there's a lot of money made and a lot of people investing in our 10x improvements on, on, on little things. Here we showed in our benchmark, our and Linux Foundation project, where, well, you can go a little faster if you do the compiler flags right and all the little 10x, 10% these thingies. Um, but and you get great press with it and you get some nice quotes, but 10% is nice. And you, as Intel, we do that so that at least people get the 10% improvement, but kind of boring. So. I asked the team to look at CAFE, deep learning. We needed to figure out what, is, what, is, what makes machine learning expensive, what makes it hard. Can we do a 10x on CAFE? So we sat down and we said, OK, we need to use AVX, so our, our nice Intel instructions. They're supposedly eight times faster. We have multi cores, let's do multi threading. And we had a team and they started digging in, in CAFE, and pretty soon they said, OK, we're making some, some nice improvements. We made that a baseline. And well, last Friday, I asked them, OK, I'm going on stage on Wednesday. Where are we with CAFE? 5x. 
So I go to the guys, I'm like, guys, <laughs> we're going to be on stage about 10x and we're at 5. They said, yeah, but we only need 2x more. <laughs> and think how great that is. If you're working on a 10% on project and you tell your boss I'm at 5%, <laughs> and the boss goes, yeah, but you need to do 2x more, you get your ass handed to you and you get sort of walked out of the building. <laughs> My team tells me, we only need, we only need 2x more. Yeah, OK. Uh, you have an idea how to do it. Yeah, we have to reinvent how we chain neural networks together and we do some parallelism and we have to invent some new locking mechanisms. Okay, you're, you're on your path, right? No worries. So they asked me to put in that there's a work in progress because they were not done. Because they didn't want to be slammed on, a, on stage here, but it's a mindset of we only have two X to go. That's the mindset that we're working in at my team. And it's a mindset that is an interesting challenge. Um, don't settle for 10%, right? If you can say, oh, we're at 5x, we only need to act more. Not a bad spot to be. So I promised cute kitty pictures in my bio, so I have to actually include some, pic some cats. Um, one of the things that you will see in teams that don't think in 10x but think in 10% 10, 10 is admiring the problem. Discussing for hours and hours of meetings, oh, we have this problem, so we can't solve it. We have this, this is hard. This is impossible. We can't actually get anywhere. We, we're just admiring the problem. If, you're, if you find yourself in meetings where people really spend a lot of time admiring the problems, you find yourself in a 10% crew. Um, it's, it's sort of a telltale for me if you're really admiring the problem. It's a really bad space to be. Um, so, we talked about Linux OS, so let's talk about containers a little bit. Container con, we should talk about that. Um, and how we can do 10x there. So historically, it always was virtual machines are expensive, but containers have some security concerns. How do you balance that? Uh, in our team, we looked at it, and I went, to my, in, I went to my boss in the ops review last year and said, hey, we want this kind of architecture where you, instead of the container running on your bare, bare metal kernel, you wrap a, light, a virtual machine around it, and at least you solve the security portion of it. There was a guy in, our, in my peer said, yeah, well, I've done virtualization for 10 years. I now do container stuff. This is not possible. You can't get this fast. You can't get density up. It's just not going to happen. It's impossible. I said, but, well, but I want to do this in 100 milliseconds. And I want to actually have almost no memory consumption. Like, that's absolutely impossible. Well, if someone tells me it's impossible, that's, I think that's a challenge. Um, so we started working on this. How do we, how do we make this faster? We, we built some tools, we measured where we were, we fixed some of the really stupid things, like virtual floppy drives that takes two seconds to start up, and we went through the whole process, we picked the right, we, we picked KVM tool as a hypervisor. At, at six weeks in, we're about at 150 milliseconds startup time from start to having the container running. It takes about 20 megabytes of memory, density was fine. I go back to an the staff meeting and say, look, it wasn't impossible. We, have, we now have our memory, and we have our startup time. And, and the guy goes, oh, well, oh. But you can't do Docker. <laughs> OK. We want Docker. Um, every single customer we talked to said the same thing. We need to integrate with Docker. OK. It wasn't even a challenge. Sorry, we just did it. Um, but. Which we have Docker running, we've been here last year, we talked about it. Our customers now say, hey, KVM tool, well, if we Google it, we see Linus hating it. So we want QMU. Not a strong argument, but customer is customer, it's always right. Can we make QMU 10 times faster? Can we do the same thing? Can we make QMU fast? And no. This was actually easy, because we knew we could actually achieve the objective because we've already shown it. We just had to do it again in a different technology. So yes, we made QMU time time. We, we made the same thing happen with QMU. Um, Anthony Zhu, I'm not sure he's here, actually spent three weeks and QMU was fast. It was about solving stupid things, removing, doing something a thousand times instead of once. Those kind of optimizations. If you think about 10%, you'll never get there. If you think about, okay, we have to change the rules. Ah, no big deal, we know it can be done. Give me three weeks. Okay, so if you want to see how it works, it's Docker. Right? 
I was trying to make a video, but it, you can't blink your eyes, and then the result is there, so I just made a, a screenshot. Um, if you want to see it live, come to our booth upstairs. But this is, this is Docker, where the backend runs in a virtual machine at the density and the time where you would normally run a traditional Docker. And the project is open source, we're on GitHub, um, all that sort of good stuff. I don't have to tell this audience how that works. Um, so this was easy, the containers were easy. We only have to make VMs fast, no big deal, easy. Um, let's do something hard, cloud. Um, Intel is pretty invested in OpenStack, and OpenStack is complex. OpenStack isn't fast. So we set on a team last year, can we make OpenStack launch of a VM faster? Because we, we can launch a VM in 100 milliseconds or 150 milliseconds, but if you measure OpenStack, it takes 10 seconds to get there. What point is it to make a VM start in 150 milliseconds if the decision to start it is, is 10 seconds? So can, uh, we should be able to get faster, right? 10x is possible, we would think. We built some tools, we measured the baseline, we've, we analyzed the, the heck out of an OpenStack launch, made graphs, all that stuff, fixed a whole bunch of things. Unfortunately, 4x. At that point, we, and we started admiring the problem. It's like we have to solve 5,000 problems to go from 4x to 5x. And each of them is a lot of work and almost no payoff. And after admiring the problem for a few weeks, those are not the good meetings, let me tell you that, and not the good analysis things, it's like, okay, we, impossible is nothing, but miracles, you, that there are limits. What we really realized is we didn't step back, back far enough. We stepped out of the box, we looted OpenStack from the outside, optimized it, we should have taken two boxes back. Um, and this is something we do regularly at Intel, one of our founders had, has, had written whole books about this, where once in a while, there's a culture at Intel where you say, let's step out of the room, come back as if we were the new people, and then decide what we would do as new people. Quite often, you do the same thing as the old process, everything is fine. Sometimes you say, we did something different, but it's kind of equal. You keep going where you were going. Sometimes you have something coming out that says, hmm, this is different, how about what we change, what we do, and incrementally go to the new direction. Especially in open source, it's new features, it's slightly new things. And sometimes you come out and say, look, we just need to stop what we're doing and do something else. Um, we call this reinvention or reimagining. Um, we, we set a bunch of people in the room. What if we build a private cloud today? What if we do OpenStack today? What would it look like? How do we get to a 10x improvement there? Um, and the first thing we said is, hey, if you build a cloud today, it's about containers and containers and VMs, not one or the other. It's not about containers and VMs or VMs and containers. It's about containers and VMs are equal. A lot of customers love containers, but they have this, this, this legacy app in a VM that have to talk to each other. VMs are not going to go away. Containers are the way to the future. But for the next decade, they're going to be there both. Um, we wanted to build it for scale. Nobody has a five machine cluster anymore in their IT department. It's more like 100 or 1,000, or maybe 5,000. We're not going to go to Google scale, but four or 5,000 is a nice sort of design point. Um, updates. We heard from lots of customers, well, OpenStack is great, but updating means building a second data center, and then just install it again. Deployment, same thing. Updates and deployments are very related. We need to be, we need to be able to start and deploy a whole new cluster in five minutes. That's what I told my team, and last week they were kind of scared, because I said, where's the, five, where's the five minutes? Well, we have this big document, okay, go fix it. Um, a lot of our cloud guys say, we, we're running in an hour. Well, I want to do it 10x, five minutes. This week they told me, yeah, we'll get there. Give us a few more days and we actually have a plan and we're executing to it. Uh, security needs to be there. So when we wrote this on a whiteboard, if these are the things we want, it's like, ah, it's actually interesting. This is an interesting thing to have. We figured out we can build this. We made an architecture, made a plan. Let's, let's build a prototype, see what it looks like. And I'm gonna show you a video of that, and the, the video folks, you need to turn on the video. Where this is the basic web UI. We're gonna launch 10,000 Docker containers on a 100 servers cluster. 
and as the 10,000 containers are being started, you can see every container gets their own IP address so that they can talk to the, to the virtual machine that, which has their own IP address. There are already 7,000 running. Um, let's add 5,000 VMs. We picked Fedora VMs. So on the same 100 node cluster, we're now launching 5,000 additional VMs on top of that. All on the same level two net shared network. Everybody has their own IP. All containers can talk to the VMs and to each other on the same network. And you can see you can see the IP addresses. You can see the MAC addresses. They're being scheduled. And they're actually starting to run as well. You can see the number there. Um, so by the time the video is done, we're about one minute in. And in that one minute, we've launched 10,000 containers and 5,000 VMs. Uh, when we first showed this video to some, to, at the OpenStack Summit, that people said that's fake. Well, it's not. We actually built that. Um, when we showed people live in the booth where we did, OK, how many VMs do you want? And we launched that many VMs, and people still didn't believe it. <laughs> OK, then at some point, what do you do, right? <laughs> so we built this prototype, and it, it works so well that we're actually we continue development. Um, it's called Chow for Cloud Integrated Advanced Orchestrator. You can, it's on GitHub. It's, the documentation is a little bit behind, because when I asked the team, OK, do I, I want a five-minute install, they said, do you want the code or do you want the documentation? Well, let's do the code first. So give us a week to, to polish up the documentation. But we are really at a place where we did a 10x on an OpenStack style setup. Just to quickly recap while well, my time is just about up. So, but every time you go to a project, try to think about what is my next 10x. Can I do a 10x? Can I make it fast, not faster? Can I really, can I, can I change the rules? Um, or am I stuck in a admire the problem situation? Am I in a meeting where we just admire the problem and don't do anything else? And if you're one of those meetings, get out. Get out, step out of the box. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, are we in the right spot? Um, you need to go to our GitHub place. Um, come to our booth. All of the things I showed here, we actually have demos upstairs. Um, and most of all, when anybody tells you in a meeting that's impossible, remember, impossible is nothing. Thank you.